Last time you are invited to give some uh, brief remarks in the, uh, in the beginning concerning different approaches to uh, Confucian ethics. But that's totally on a voluntary basis, and uh, if you don't have any remarks, then that's fine too. Uh, anyone who would like to make some uh, comments to, uh, to get started? Yes, please. it's not, I'm not sure how relevant this is, but like I write a paper on um, sort of response to the kind of uh, approaching Confucius as a social ethics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like this is a um, pretty common understanding of Confucian, Confucianism because we don't really talk about philosophy, uh, Confucianism so much as a philosophy, like you study individuals, but more, as, um, more talking about relationship and hierarchy and how. Um, how we and music sort of influence individuals. Mm -hmm. um, but I think after reading like Bible Confucian, Neo Confucius, I was sort of surprised that people actually don't approach Confucius more from an in individual perspective because mm -hmm. um, sort of Fuxi and Wyoming both talk more about how individuals um, go out and understand the world. And mm -hmm. so it seems to me there, that there is actually a kind of to an extent, existential choice mm -hmm. there that's sort of ignored in most of literature. And, and sort of when you talk about um, human beings are centered for all relationships, mm -hmm. you still feel like human beings are sort of shaped by this relationship and sort of naturally came, come, or whatever, so like become the center. Mm -hmm. But I think a different perspective is to see the individual as a center sort of to shape the relationship. And I feel like there's some tension over there, and I just don't like to get into understand it. Sure, I think that that's, a, that's one of the uh, problems we have to deal with. Uh, any comments on this before we begin? Okay. Oh, and on uh, that, uh, yes, please. Oh, I have a couple of. Uh, reflective comments, but not related to what he says. And I don't want to take other students' time if other, but other people have something to say. Uh, but I, a couple of things that are striking to me from this, uh, from this course, uh, one, is, uh, uh, one is the idea uh, of everything is a communion of objects, not a collection of objects and the, our ability to develop sensibility and sensibility, sensitivity and sensibility. I think that's striking because it has to do with uh, our ability to relate to other people, to relate to other things. Um, and at one time you said we should take everything uh, up close and personal, and you distinguish, you make the distinction between personal and private. And that's also striking to me because for many years um, I wasn't interested in any subject in humanities because any sub because humanities courses didn't speak to me, did not speak to me, never spoke to me. So I wasn't, I just wasn't interested. I was both disinterested and uninterested. I was both disinterested and uninterested. Um, and 
after taking this course, I, I, I realized why I wasn't interested, because I didn't take it personal. I didn't take everything personal, so it, everything never spoke to me. Um, so that, that is striking in my own uh, background. Another thing that's striking is, is when you talk about enabling constraints. That struck me in the sense that um, everything, uh, it, is our cons it is our constraints, it is, it is our constraints that make us, make us, make every one of us unique. And it, if we realize how unique we are, we could always make something out of our constraints. Um, I think that's, that's also a very positive, very up, upbeat, upbeat note. Um, so there are a couple of things in this course that I feel very uh, uplifting and tr transformative from my personal point of view. And I have, uh, I have two questions. One, is quest one question is, is very specific. Uh, from last, at the end of last course, when you were talking about Confucianism as a kind of virtue ethics, um, what is insufficient? You, you were talking about Confucianism as um, a form of care ethic and what's the deficiency of that, and a form of role ethics, what's the deficiency of that, and then you were talking about Confucian ethics as virtue, as virtue ethics, and what's the deficiency of that, and I didn't catch the problem with, with looking at uh, Confucian ethics as virtue ethics. What does it lack? Uh, that's a specific question. And then a, a bigger question is uh, when you were talking about Wang Yangming and um, Zhu Xi, uh, for those of us who first encountered these uh, philosophers, I didn't quite understand the. Um, I didn't catch the differences between them. What are the striking? The um, uh, Wang Yangming is is much later. Was lived much later time from Zhu Xi, and what did he? Just the differences. The differences between them. Uh, that's a bigger question. And I felt uh, I was I'm one of those people who first encountered these people, so I didn't quite hear <coughs> the differences between them. So that's a bigger question, but this, this specific question is the, the problem with viewing Confucian ethics as a kind of virtue ethics. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with that? Yeah, yeah. What's the, what, what does it lack? Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Okay. Uh, first of all, there are three approaches. Role ethics, care ethics, mm -hmm and uh, virtue ethics. Maybe the first question I want to pose is uh, are there other alternatives? And uh, whether the uh, Confucian approach is linked to something which cannot be accommodated by any of the three, all the three combined. Uh, one question uh, about Confucianism as social ethics not specifically refers to the individual, and so it's not philosophical. My first response to that is uh, whether it's philosophy or religion, it's not really that important because these two categories emerge from the West. You have the Greek tradition on the one hand and the Judaic tradition on the other. That when you talk about religion, normally you talk about the tradition from Judaism to Christianity to Islam. If you talk about philosophy, basic, basically it's from the Greek tradition, and then with the Bacon, and of course the enlightenment of science and technology. And since Confucianism is part, it's not part of this particular uh, cultural ethos. So like Buddhism, Hinduism, and uh, maybe Zoroastrianism, and Egyptian ideas, we know very little about it. And the fusion of the two, it's both philosophical because it involves a great deal of contemplative thinking. Uh, imagination is very important. Uh, at the same time, it's experiential. Experiential in the sense, this question, the question of faith, the Confucian faith, is in the perfectibility of each and every human being, which is uh, not an assumption which is a faith in the transformability of uh, human nature. So it's both uh, philosophical and could be both philosophical and re religious. The other questions are much more complicated. And I, I think uh, we need to address those kind of questions. Stop me when uh, you have any, uh, any issues. I think these are open 
and these are more or less my own approach, therefore uh, personal.